here at Images on the Page. Today I'm going to be doing another tag video. I am doing the Back From Booknet Fest tag. Um, this is coming to you very late. Booknet Fest was, I can't even believe I'm saying this, over a month ago. And I went and had a spectacular time. Um, this tag was created by Njeri over at Onyx Pages. I will link her channel down below. She's fabulous. You have to check her out. Um, and let's just go ahead and get started. So if I'm looking down, it's because I wrote them down because I film on my phone. So prompt one is explain your BookNet Fest experience in one word. Overwhelming. Two, what was your favorite session and why? This one's, oh my goodness. Um, let me see. I'm going to choose two answers for this. One of them being five out of five stars, which was moderated by Kathy Trithart and Jerry from Ninjeri from over from Onyx Pages, Adriana from Perpetual Pages, Thomas from SFF 180, and Will Read for Booze. Um, I really enjoyed this panel because it kind of talked about how, uh, briefly talked about how kind of the panelists assumed five star ratings came about and whether they personally liked it or didn't like it, and I and how they all individually rate things and I thought that was so interesting because by inherently having different rating systems they're kind of slightly disagreeing with the specific five out of five stars even if they use it because the different stars mean different th things to different um, panelists and Ninjiri has this wonderful seven cowrie shell rating for how she um, she uses to review her books, which I would definitely go check out, uh, just hearing her talk about it and listen to her reviews because they are so well done. And Adriana can pack so much into a short amount of space in a few words and I can't and it's a ability I envy. But I just thought it was so interesting because Rating on a five-star scale is something I definitely struggle with because I can have two different books that I've rated three stars or four stars or four stars or even five stars for completely different reasons. There, It's not like across the board. If it's a five-star, it means this, this, and that, and the other thing. Um, there are some books I've rated three stars that I will go back and reread before I'll read a reread a five-star. And so it's really hard for me to explain it because they all mean different things. And I just thought it was so interesting listening to everyone else talk about their views on the five-star rating system. The other panel that I absolutely loved was We Don't Just Talk About Books. Um, and it, brief to condense it, it talked about how talking about books also, we're kind of talking about society and how books can impact and change society and how we talk about them can create change and I just thought this was so impactful especially in a world where w that is trying to be way more inclusive and sh showcase way more diversity and we're pushing for that and we're craving it and in a world like that it's awesome to be able to say you know yeah we talk about books but the issues talked about in books mean more than just these words on a page. They impact more than that. And I just, I absolutely love that panel. Um, goosebumps the entire time. Number three is what is the most interesting thing you learned? Um, this one's hard for me because I learned at once so much and yet not stuff that I didn't kind of already know like it just brought to the forefront a lot of things that I had just kind of seen on my periphery being in the book community um a random thing I learned is how fun book defacing is I never thought I would really be one of those people who enjoys it but I did the workshop for book defacing and yeah I'm probably gonna continue that Number four is, were there any conversations you had at BookNet Fest that you think the book community needs to have all year long or more than just at BookNet Fest? And I can just say all of them. Um, 
The biggest one is, I mean, it wasn't even, like, talked about in a specific panel, but it was brought up was, in. I mean, I can't say it enough, it's just, we talk about needing more diversity, and yet I, I've even caught my, caught it in my feed is, like, diversifying who you watch. I mean, for a long time, I just watched the big booktubers, which are generally white female. Um, some of them in other countries, which is awesome. But just being conscious of that effort and following people who have a different sexuality than you, a different gender identity than you, and to put money where my mouth is, you should definitely check check out, I can't say her name enough in this video, Ninjiri. Adriana over at Pet Pet Perpetual Pages, I cannot speak, Cobb over at Reading Solus, Brody over at Et to Brody, I mean, just to name a few, and I will link more down below, but they are all awesome, wonderful creators who are doing really awesome things with their channel, and you have to go check them out. Prop number five, or question, is what was the most memorable moment you had at BookNet Fest? There can be more than one. Um, I'm going to just mention two because, honestly, BookNet Fest as a whole was incredibly memorable. It was my first bookish event, and it's not really like any other that I've heard talk about because it is meant for book creators, like people who create bookish content on the internet in some way shape or form it is not centered around getting free books or publishers or anything like that author signings which while sad in some ways was actually i thought the appeal of it because it's about the relationships and the conversations you have with the people of the book community um but my two most memorable moments was probably actually the night before the event even started. So the event is a two-day event and goes Friday and Saturday. And I got in to Orlando uh, afternoon on Thursday. And I met some people I had talked to, um, Alicia and R. We met up and hung out for a bit. And then we went back to where the event was being hosted for the night before. And we met some other people. And just having... I'm so much of an introvert, and as I get older, I'm pretty sure I'm becoming more of one, which is kind of concerning, but whatever. We're here. It was so interesting to see these people who, I mean, some of them I had only met that day. Some of them I had only s seen on my TV screen be here and get to interact with them and talk to them and create friendships. That was just really amazing. And then the second memory was the keynote address made by Sam from Thoughts on Tomes and Mari from My Name is Marinez, um, the two co-founders of this event, because this is their third year and they were just talking about the growth they've had and what they're kind of hoping to go pushing forward and it was so, or do, accomplish going forward. There we go. I know English. Um, and it was just so emotional and inspiring and it just set the tone for a really amazing time. Number six is in what way does BookNet Fest add value to the book bookish community? Um, besides in saying in all the ways I think it's really awesome that these people that you're creating friendships with online you have the chance to meet them for the first time and strengthen that bond to be able to make that physical connection. Um, I also think because I know that at Book Not Fest they don't have a diversity panel and a lot of people won't go for that reason, but it's not because they don't talk about diversity, it's because they talk about diversity in every single panel. I can't stress enough how awesome that is that diversity is something they're focusing on in five out of five stars and how it impacts how you rate a book in consumerism and how that affects being a book consumer and like how different de demographics and cultures and all that plays a part 
in every panel they had going on. And so I just thought it was amazing to see a new aspect to a book convention that wasn't like BookCon, which I don't know that I would ever go to because I, it just, it just sounds scary. Um, number seven is swag bookshop treasures or something you got from a vendor. So there are a couple things. First one is I got this, I believe it's an arc, um, or just copy of August Prother is not dead yet um, from the Parliament House. They s seem to specialize in kind of sci-fi fantasy horror thriller books um, and it just sounds really amazing and it's kind of about authors who somehow get pulled into their own stories. Um, So the little blurb on the back says, Four queer kids, two epic journeys, no filter. Who wants to live forever? And, oh, it says it on the front too. Cool. <laughs> and I'm interested to read this and kind of see what ounce that, um, that publisher has to offer. But the biggest thing I got was all these bookmarks from different creators, from different publishers. Like, first of all, this was the smartest idea, whoever started it, and if everyone, a whole bunch of people had the idea at the same time is to have book content creators do bookmarks, like it's so cute. And it's like, we have so many awesome ones and they're so, mo they're so well done, like, ah, here's the one, the official one for Booknet Fest. We have Tome Infinity, and I just, I love it because it's kind of like a reminder that I got to personally meet these people. It's not just something I picked up, like, at a random booth and was like, oh, this is cool. Like, these are people I met and I talked to and had a wonderful time with. Number eight is shout out a few content creators who inspired you at BookNet Fest. Of course, Ninjiri from Onyx Pages. I think this is the fifth time I've said her name, so take a shot every time I mention her. We, of course, have um, Jessie from Bowties in Books. They are awesome, and I don't know how they walk around in heels all the time because, God, my feet would kill me. Kathy, of course, over at Kathy Tridhart, Adriana over at Adriana, Adriana over at Pet Perpetual Pages. There was just so many people there who were so inspiring, especially the people who created content while there. Like I saw so many people vlogging and then they came out with vlogs, not like this is a month later and I didn't even, this is not a vlog. This is me sitting down at home talking to my phone. They actually put in the time and effort to vlog well at this awesome crazy event and then they had it up within like days or a week of coming like I think this is my second video since coming back and my last one just went up a couple days ago like all of those people who did that are completely amazing number nine is if you come if you came back next year what would you change um, I originally had a different answer for this, but I'm actually going to piggy off Brody's answer because I feel like what they said really needs to be highlighted. So it's really cool. We all get these like little badges that you get, which are right now irritating, but they're really pretty like, and they're made of nice, like bendy plastics. So you can actually keep them. Um, but right here at the bottom, they have a section for pronouns. And I feel like as a community, we need to hi not highlight those, but like make sure to pay attention to those more because I heard other people slipping up and I mean, I'm not calling anyone out specifically because I know I did it where 
you are using the wrong pronouns for people who prefer specific pronouns and for a place that's supposed to be safe and welcoming and inclusive that makes it harder for those people to feel safe and welcome and included when people forget or mistakenly like I'm like I said I did it too use the incorrect pronouns and it makes it so that they don't feel as seen or included in something like that and so as a community especially at BookNet Fest I feel like it is very important that we make sure to ask or even just look at the badges for someone's pronouns and yeah it might be awkward but I'm, I'm assuming and people can correct me that they would much prefer you ask their pronouns and just say hey what do you prefer than just assuming a gender identity for them and so I I want to do better and I would like for the community as a whole to do better as well and number 10 is please share your prom picture or any other pictures of you having fun at BookNet West. I mostly just have pictures of the panels um, because I was just so, like I said in my first word, overwhelmed. But I do have two of the three prom pictures I have because one, my favorite, is hanging up in my cubicle at work so I can just kind of remember it all the time. Um, so this is the first one. This is... Jensen, we have Alicia, me, and then Catherine, and I'll link their handles down below, just doing that cheesy prom, old like 70s prom photos where you're just kind of like, mm, or you're holding them, but we did it together because why not? And then it's just me and Jensen because we matched and we're blending into each other, so we decided to take a picture. Um, if I find any more, I will definitely add them here, but... I wouldn't be surprised if I don't because like I said I was either just focusing on being in the moment or I just took pictures of the panels to add to my bullet journal later. I guess let me know if you guys have ever been to a book convention. If you have, what have you thought of it? Because like I said this is my first one I've gone to and I would like to go to more but some of them just seem very overwhelming. So. Until the next video, ta-ta for now.